In this video, I'm going to be going through presbycusis, which is also known as age-related hearing loss. Presbycusis is described as age-related hearing loss. It's a type of sensory neural hearing loss that occurs in people as they get older. It tends to affect high-pitched sounds first and more markedly than lower-pitched sounds. The hearing loss occurs gradually and symmetrically, affecting both ears equally. The causes of hearing loss in presbycusis are complex. There's likely to be several different mechanisms causing the hearing loss, and these include a loss of the hair cells in the cochlea, loss of the neurons in the cochlea, atrophy of something called the stria vascularis, which is important in regulating the endolymph, and also reduced endolymphatic potential. Let's talk about risk factors. Probably the main risk factor is age, and as the age increases, so does the risk of presbycusis. Other risk factors are male gender, family history of presbycusis, loud noise exposure during the lifetime, diabetes, hypertension, the use of ototoxic medications, and smoking. Exposure to loud noise over time is a key risk factor that can be addressed to potentially prevent or reduce the extent of presbycusis. Hearing protection should be worn in environments where there's exposure to loud noises for prolonged periods in order to reduce the risk, for example in occupations such as woodworking or construction. Let's talk about the presentation. Hearing loss in presbycusis is gradual and insidious. The gradual onset may mean that patients do not notice a change in their hearing. The loss of high-pitched sounds can make speech difficult to hear and understand, particularly in loud environments. Male voices may be easier to hear than female voices due to the generally lower pitch. Patients may present after others have noticed that they're not paying attention or they're missing details of conversations. Sometimes patients can present with concerns about dementia when in fact the issue is hearing loss. As well as hearing loss, there may be associated tinnitus, which is a ringing or added sound in the ears. It's worth noting that patients with hearing loss are more likely to develop dementia and treating the hearing loss, for example with a hearing aid, may reduce this risk. Let's talk about making the diagnosis. Audiometry is the investigation of choice for establishing the diagnosis and the extent of the hearing loss. A typical pattern will be seen on the audiogram. Presbycusis will give a sensory neural pattern of hearing loss with normal or near normal hearing at lower frequencies and worsening hearing loss at higher frequencies. Finally, let's talk about management. The effects of presbycusis cannot be reversed. Management involves supporting the person to maintain normal functioning. And this involves optimizing the environment, for example, reducing the ambient noise during conversations to make it easier to hear what's being said. The use of hearing aids to amplify sounds and improve hearing. And a final option is cochlear implants in patients where hearing aids are not sufficient.